Welcome to the Books of the Month show. I am your host, Marilyn Todman. I am excited about having the pleasure to have such an amazing woman on set today with me. Help me welcome this amazing author, Sarah Marchbank. How are you? Really well. Well, I'm quite nervous. <laughs> yeah, I am nervous. I'm not going to lie. Well, you look beautiful. Oh, thank you very much. You look much. beautiful. So do you. And you're doing very well. And, thank you. Um, we are so grateful of having her on the Books of the Month show. I think she is really a um, profound author, and she's going to talk about her book today. And um, Sarah, the name of your book is Dying for a Drink. Mm. Mm. Why title it Dying for a Drink? Because literally I was always dying for a drink, you know, and, and I couldn't stop. So that was where I sort of got the mm -hmm. title from, yeah. Okay, so tell me about your childhood. Let's start from childhood. Okay, yeah, um, I'm quite into the inner child thing. You know, I had a, I had a lovely, lovely childhood. Um, I grew up in South Wales in the UK. Two beautiful parents, um, my mother Margaret, and my father Tony, who sadly passed away some time ago. I've got a sister Jo, mm -hmm. who is uh, nearly two years older than me, mm -hmm. and a brother Simon, who is. Uh, nearly four years younger than me. Mm -hmm. So I was the middle child. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. And it was a happy, um, I met three of my best friends and uh, we were in school together and we met when we were at eight or nine and mm -hmm. we've been friends ever since. Mm -hmm. And they've supported me through some really, really dark times. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to just say, uh, yeah, it's Amanda, Claire and Helen. Thank mm -hmm. you. Beautiful, beautiful, and and through the years, um, what got you into alcohol? Let's just get to the point. What caused you to start drinking? Um, I was a social drinker for a long time. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I was nursing, um, I didn't have any money, so the only time I drank was when uh, the fireman or the policeman asked us to, you know, parties, and it mm -hmm. was twenty-five pence a drink in those days. Mm -hmm. So it's going mm -hmm. back a while. Um, um, I didn't drink when I was pregnant with either of my children mm -hmm. because I'd, I'd nursed um, babies who had fetal alcohol syndrome, mm -hmm. so I wasn't going to take that risk. Um, um, so my husband took a job, my first husband took a job in um, Australia with mm -hmm. Nokia, uh, mobile phones, um, and we moved there. I thought it would be for a couple of years, mm -hmm. but we ended up there just over 20 mm -hmm. years, um, and our first child, Sam, who I love dearly, and he knows that, um, he was born in October 1993, mm -hmm. and um, he was very sick as a child, and um, that was when I, that I gave my life to Christ, mm -hmm. and um, I swore off having any more children because I was terrified of mm -hmm. having another sick child. And I believe that my daughter Molly, and I love you Molly too, mm -hmm. um, you were a gift from God because she was born beautiful, mm -hmm. healthy, and to this day has just been nothing but beautiful inside mm -hmm. and out. Mm -hmm. oh, well, both of them, amazing yes. children. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm. okay, so but what, being a social drinker, was, it, was there something that um, clicked in your life to cause you to begin to start over drinking? Yeah, I think a lot of it was um, my parents were out to Australia for my 40th birthday and um, when they left I just felt so empty mm -hmm. you know I loved my parents and um, you know the children were getting a bit older and I think a lot of it was boredom mm -hmm. and I had lovely girlfriends in Australia and we'd go out for what we called li liquid lunches and just mm -hmm. have, you know, have a few drinks and then um, I started to, I'm going to be honest here, mm -hmm. um, when I knew I had to drive in the evening, for, you know, something for the kids, you know, mm -hmm. some, something relating to school, I'd start panicking, thinking, oh, crikey, you know, I can't drink, well, I can have two drinks and drive and that'll be it, you know. So, um, yeah, I had to sort of, you know, white knuckle it, as they say in AA, um, and have the two drinks, and, um, and then it... Uh, I was just, I was bored, I was bored, I was, um, I felt like I'd lost, um, 
I loved it when the children were younger and I was there, mm -hmm. the whole world, you know, they hold my hand crossing the mm -hmm. road and um, of course children grow up, mm -hmm. you know, and they are beautiful. Um, so yes, my husband took a job in New Jersey mm -hmm. and uh, that was with Virgin Mobile phones um, and I did curb my drinking for the first year just mm -hmm. to get settled, you know, with doctors, dentists, mm -hmm. schools. Um, and no offence to the Americans, but it was a little bit like Desperate Housewives. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when we moved into our house, mm -hmm. I saw people coming up the path with baked goods and I was thinking, oh mm -hmm. dear, you know, but I mean, mm -hmm. they're lovely, lovely people. So, um, and um, so for the first year I was, you know, it wasn't too bad. Mm -hmm. um, and I volunteered at um, my daughter's school um, and that was um, helping Spanish kids uh, with their mm -hmm. English. Mm -hmm. um, and they loved me. Well, they, they loved me because I already had a couple of drinks under my belt, if mm -hmm. I'm honest. And they got away with murder. Um, and there was a wonderful specialised children's hospital mm -hmm. which I volunteered at as well and did fundraising events. And I even, <laughs> I even modelled at some event and they put me in um, to inspire the fuller figured woman. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think I was that large, but anyway, uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. that was quite funny, me modelling. Mm -hmm. um, and then it just got worse and worse and worse. And the ladies um, were lovely, but they kept asking Did you me. actually, when it got worse, worse and worse, did you... Um, at that point, try to say, okay, I, this is going too far. No. When was that going too far moment? When did uh, that happen? Um, the time the time I had my first morning drink, that mm -hmm. was when it was, yeah. So basically the ladies kept asking me to go power walking with them and I mm -hmm. sort of said no. Um, and I must have got very drunk one night and um, to my horror, I looked at my phone in the morning and I'd agreed to go. Mm -hmm. So I'd all already knew about hair of the dog, you know, so I thought, right, I'll down a couple of vodkas and, you know, mm -hmm. and as they were arriving, you know, it was the gallons of mouthwash, chewing gum, perfume, um, and I did it, uh, but never again, it was too risky, mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Um, I, I do know that you have a medical background. Yeah, I, yes. I do. Um, what, did that ever come into place of you thinking about the um, consequences to your body no, of the drinking? Not, not once I'd crossed that line mm -hmm. and um, sadly no and I wish they, I wish I had but mm -hmm. um, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I, I, um, once I had that first morning drink then I drank 24-7. But you knew the consequences. Yeah, oh yes. But you I kind knew. of more like ignored the consequences. Oh yes, it was just yeah. almost as if, mm -hmm. oh this isn't really me, if that mm -hmm. makes sense, it's kind of somebody yeah. else. Right. And well, I think that's how it is with, with a lot of people. Mm. But I, I think this is really a good good time, a good thing of you to even write the book, yeah. to share those things about your life. But even now, I think this is a good platform and an opportunity um, with your expertise in, in medical what is it that you can say to someone that may be dealing with this now? What can you tell them about the the, um, the consequences of it with their body? Oh, plenty. I mean, this is, I mean, it, if I'm sounding like Miss AA, it's only because I, mm. I was big AA. Um, I used to go to lots of meetings in Australia. So, you know, this is a chronic, progressive, and very often fatal disease. Um, and it's, recognized, it's been recognized by the World Health Organization as a mental illness for some years now. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're not making it up and we're not just sort of, mm -hmm. it isn't a case of, oh, pull your socks up and stop drinking. Mm -hmm. um, so, but what I would say, you know, to any fellow addicts out there, it's just not worth it. Because if you're like me, um, I, I have no lives left in me. If I relapse again, I would be dead. So, mm -hmm. um, I'm not trying to scare you. Well, actually I am. Yeah, um, I want to scare you into realizing that this will, it'll kill you. And we don't actually need alcohol or drugs. I mean, nobody does, mm -hmm. but I know it's a choice and I know, and I appreciate how hard it is to give up. But for me, giving up wasn't the hardest part. The hardest part was staying stopped, if that wow. makes sense. That's good what you said there, yeah. Yes, because, mm -hmm. you know, it's, um, I couldn't stop unless I was 
hospitalised or I was taken into rehab. Mm -hmm. um, but it's the staying stopped, and uh, you know, for me, I had to. Um, well, when I got sober in Sydney, I was in three rehabs within the space of six months, and I was in total denial. And finally, I got a wonderful sponsor, and um, the rule of thumb is that you go to 90 meetings in the first 90 days. Um, and I was so desperate, I did whatever it took. And mm -hmm. I, I even went to two or three meetings some days because mm -hmm. I wasn't working. Mm -hmm. And um, in Sydney, they've got breakfast meetings, lunchtime meetings, mm -hmm. and evening meetings. So, you know, I gave it everything I had and also started the 12 steps straight away um mm -hmm. and that for me you know it was um it saved my life mm -hmm. it saved my life aa because um without that i mean i had there were so many wonderful beautiful people who just encouraged me tell us a little bit about the meetings or what experiences um, in the different meetings that you went to yeah no well they were all, they, they were all different but mm -hmm. the general format was um somebody would welcome you on the door take your name um and you'd have a seat um there'd be a chairperson mm -hmm. um and then they would read out um the preamble which i, I won't go into all because it's quite long and then they would basically ask people to come up and share mm -hmm. so you'd go to the front and you would you're supposed to share your experience, strength, and hope. So um, I did that lots of times. Um, mm -hmm. I even, when I got, was two years sober, I sponsored two ladies, which ended very badly because <laughs> they weren't ready. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, AA, yeah, that, you know, I got nearly four years sobriety up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have to be ready. You've got to be ready and uh, mm -hmm. nobody, you know, you can't tell an alcoholic anything and that's the truth, you know, so you can't just say stop mm -hmm. because um, it's just not like that. I mm -hmm. mean, like for me, even knowing the consequences, um, yeah, when I moved back here, I, it was so much worse and that's when I say that it's progressive. So when I picked up a drink after four years, it was worse. Mm -hmm. My drinking was worse than when I, you know, had got mm -hmm. sober originally. Mm. Wow. So how do you know that you know that you're ready? The reason I'm asking that is is that 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 place of denial uh -huh. where, where you deny and say I'm not yeah, I do I do drink, mm. I drink some extra drinks, but uh -huh. I'm not I am not an alcoholic. Yes. Stop calling me I, that. I'm not an alcoholic. I've heard that so many times mm -hmm. and it's in the book, but one of the phrases I really, really despise is functioning alcoholic. I mean, there are some functioning alcoholics, mm -hmm. you know, who, but um, most of us, well, me, I, I'll speak in the eye. Um, no, um, I wasn't a functioning alcoholic in the end at all. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, um, I never abused my children, but, you know, it got to the point where, you know, um, I couldn't even remember if I'd mm -hmm. kissed them goodnight. What is night. that? You, I, I'm not familiar with that. What's that? Functioning story? alcoholic. Functioning alcoholic. So basically they can... A lot of people can, you know, drink very, very heavily, alcoholically, but they can still hold down a job. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's what a functioning yeah. alcoholic would be. Who in the world would call it functioning alcoholic? Because even though the out the outward appearance, and you're doing the daily routine, yeah, everything you need to do. Oh, I'm a functioning alcoholic. Mm. What does that really mean? Because <laughs> because the same thing that's happening on the inside of your body mm. is happening on happening to the unfunctioning yes. alcoholic so yeah. you still you know you understand what i'm saying mm -hmm. you know so it does, doesn't it's, make any sense to me it makes no alcoholic. sense to me at yeah. all no it doesn't and i yeah. certainly wasn't functioning you are or you're not yeah i mean you i think yeah. you either are or you or you're not yeah mm -hmm. um i think that and that's very clear yes you know? and we can take a break on that right. it's either you are or you're not and when we come back we're going to talk more on that we'll be right back Millions of people today have no dental insurance. If you're without insurance, do you have a plan to care for your teeth without spending a fortune? Well, we do. Introducing Dental Plans. Dental Plans offers more than 40 dental savings plans from top healthcare brands. You pay one low annual membership fee and then save money every time you go to the dentist. Dental Plans pays for itself immediately. With Dental Plans, you choose your dentist. You can join today and start saving at the dentist tomorrow. 
There's even a 30-day money-back guarantee. It was very easy to find a plan that, that met our budget. There's no reason to not cut your dental bills in half. You can get everything done that you need to have done and it's still affordable. So, if you don't have dental insurance, you now have a plan. Dental plans. Join today and you'll save 15% off any plan. We'll even give you one month free with this limited time exclusive TV offer. Visit dentalplans.com or call 855-567-6668. Does this sound familiar? You make the minimum payment, but the balance is still the same. You make a payment a few days late. Here come the late fees, past due notice, and the collection calls. We understand dealing with debt problems is not easy. It is stressful and hard, not only for you, but for your loved ones, your family. You're not alone, but you must understand debt problems only get worse unless you take action. If you owe more than $10,000 in credit card debt, medical bills, or other unsecured debt, please take a minute and call the number on the screen. Learn about programs that have helped thousands of people get out of debt. Reduce your monthly payments, cut interest, and even settle your debt for a lot less than you owe. Save thousands. Get your life back. Call the number on the screen now. It's a free call, free information, and most importantly, you will have options. Remember, waiting will not make the problem go away. Call us. Our lines are now open. We are back with Sarah March back. March Bank. Is That's that right? March, March Bank. Bank. Yes. Okay. Dying for a drink. Mm. Okay. I was dying yes. for a drink, yeah. Dying for a drink. But mm. you know what? Now you're living. I'm living. Living without a drink. Yeah, which is, it is, uh, it's indescribable, mm -hmm. the difference. Um, yeah. And, um, um, you know, physically, emotionally, spiritually, it is, co it's a completely different way of living. So how are you feeling now? I feel well. I'm a bit jet lagged, but um, mm -hmm. I feel I, I feel amazing. You know, mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, you know, obviously there's still a lot of healing to be done within the family because mm -hmm. I caused a lot of chaos, devastation, mm -hmm. fear, um, hurt, hurt my loved ones. You know, blackout drinking, saying things that were really horrible, um, especially to my poor sister Jo, who I love you very much, Jo. Um, and my two beautiful kids, yeah, um, they should never have seen some of the things that they saw, mm -hmm. you know, but they've, they've never stopped loving me. They might not mm -hmm. have liked me, but you know, they are yeah. amazing. It's, kids. it's amazing you said that, you know, I want to talk about the power of love, mm -hmm. you know, where your family at one point may have felt very aggravated, frustrated. Yeah with you but the love is the love was there and the love mm -hmm. is still there yeah and and the love and the, the joy and the mm -hmm. peace to see that you are no longer an alcoholic mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. the love that you had to have for yourself uh, that was the hardest part yeah the hardest part was actually being able to love myself but you did it well I can't say yes well I sort of like myself, I think, yes, yeah. but love is, I don't know, I haven't really thought about that one, yeah. but yeah. can't really say I love myself, but um, it, I it had to be, and it, it had to be a, a level of love for yourself yeah. to be able to come to this point mm. of not having a drink mm. in two and a half years, yeah. not, not worrying about, uh, we're not worrying about tomorrow, No. but we're celebrating today. Yeah. And the celebration of today is the love for yourself mm. and um, to move forward because you no longer want to, you know, the, the, the Bible says about our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit mm. and uh, being able to love your temple, mm. you know, and um, protect your temple as yes. what's going inside of it. Mm. And so you're at that place now where you have accomplished that. And also speaking of love, a time of renewal, yes. uh, being able to renew relationships, mm. you know, with family and love, loved ones. And th that is so amazing how the love of God, uh, God's love, mm. how he can strengthen us and mm. give us the strength to do literally the impossible. Mm. So. There may be some of you that, that's watching today and you may be dealing with um, alcoholism and drug addiction and all that and you're saying, no way, um, uh, I'm not an alcoholic or you may know that you are or drugs or whatever, 
but you just can't find the way to stop, you know. But the thing is, is that um, God is able to give you the strength to be able to do it. Um, you're looking at Sarah here today, and you're doing it, and I'm proud of you. Thank you. Uh, it, it's always blessed me to be able to see people accomplish things that you didn't think was possible, mm. you know. But you did it, and and you're a young woman. You got your whole life ahead of you, yes. and now the transition now, Miss Marchbank. The transition now is that you are an accomplished author, <laughs> which I never thought I would. Yes, be, yes, um, you are, yeah. and uh, and and now being able to um, talk to a lot of people, tell your mm -hmm. story, mm -hmm. you know, to a lot of people. By television and by book, of yeah. course. And those of you that are watching, you definitely you have a loved one um, that need to read this book to really mm -hmm. inspire them and give them hope. Because at the end of the day, it's all about hope. It is. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know, I'm not trying to sort of plug my book, but um, my story is horrific. And um, yeah, so I think that if you read it, then maybe you would stop. Because, um, yeah, I've caused so much chaos, devastation, hurt. Um, but, you know, the love is still there. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. What chapter in your book would, be, would you say would be the most um, empowering part of your book um, for viewers? Which part of the book? We know probably, the whole book, but, but it got to be that one part of it. Probably yeah. the ending, actually, because, mm -hmm. you know, it was it was so different. And, you know, one of my favorite hymns is Amazing Grace. And, I mean, how true is that? You know, Amazing Grace, you know, saved a wretch like me. And, you know, when I think about it, when Jesus walked on this earth, you know, he bothered with people like us. Mm -hmm. You know, the outcasts, the lepers, the, you know, so... You know, my chains fell off. I've been set free. I mm -hmm. rose, stepped forth, and followed thee. So that's that's. Um, and I just know. Well, I will never know, um, because I was drinking to blackout. How many times um, I could have died? But all I do know, without any doubt, is that Jesus lay in that pit with me, and He cradled me. And. Um, getting a bit tearful, um, he cradled me, lay with me, lifted me up. Beautiful. Um, gave me the strength to continue. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, hallelujah. Yeah. He kept you. Mm. He did. Yeah, he kept yeah. you. Yeah. Mm. Kept you. And now you're able to tell the story. Mm. Yeah. You know, you know, so sometimes all things work together for the good. Mm. You know, and so you being able to to um, overcome that, mm. and you have to use the word overcoming. You mm. you overcame it, you know. So you're not worried about tomorrow. Tomorrow hasn't gotten here yet, in no, a way. You know, <laughs> you no. know. But um, as of today, you are victorious. Thank you. Yes, today you are victorious, and in that place of, of victory, you have that strength to be able to help a whole lot of other people. Well, I hope so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So what is it that you would say to someone today, uh, that man or that woman that's um, dealing with alcoholism or drugs? I would say... Can you look in this camera right here? Well, what is it that you would I say to them? I would say, right I would say, reach out and ask for help, because that's the thing that I would never do. I just drank behind closed doors. So, you know, reach out for the help. There's so much help out there whether it's friends, family, but just reach out because, you know, this addiction kills so many people um, that, yeah, reach out and get the help you need. That would be my message, yeah. And, you know, they say in AA about having a higher power. Well, obviously, I'm a Christian. I mean, and but you, it's, it's so important to have a higher power. And, you know, I... It can be anything, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Any sort of religion. Um, I remember somebody in Australia in AA, he made his running shoes his higher power. <laughs> but, you know, it mm -hmm. can be anything. It can be your children or whatever. But, 
yeah, I mean, obviously for me, um, it's because I'm a Christian, but uh, yeah, that's what I would say. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Dying for a dream. Mm. And now you're living. I'm living. You're living. And it's all about making that choice, mm. a choice to live, a choice to be free, mm. yes. a choice to be victorious. Mm. So it's, it's all about all about that. And um, I think we just have a couple of moments. And um, one other thing I do want you to share with us today is that uh, I think you talked a little bit about it earlier, but just a little a couple of minutes that um, that moment, mm. that defining moment, mm. when you said enough is enough, and this time you really meant it. Yeah. A lot of moments, but this time you really, really meant mm. it. When was it, and how did it feel? Well, I mean, I had just caused so, so much, you know, as I say, hurt my family so much, and, you know, I just knew that I couldn't go on, and I knew that if I relapsed again, I would probably die. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the defining moment. Mm -hmm. Was it a, a sense of anger or realization? No, it was a, it was a great sadness. It was a mm -hmm. just, you know, for all my loved ones who, you know, yeah. So it was just a, that was the moment. It was, I can't put them through any more of this. Mm -hmm. I can't. Yes. And that was really a life moment. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A life moment. It was. A decision to live. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Beautiful. I do encourage you to get a copy of the book, Dying for a Drink, because it's time to live. We'll see you again on the Books of the Muff Show. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Wonderful. Does this sound familiar? You make the minimum payment, but the balance is still the same. You make a payment a few days late. Here come the late fees, past due notice, and the collection calls. We understand dealing with debt problems is not easy. It is stressful and hard, not only for you, but for your loved ones, your family. You're not alone, but you must understand debt problems only get worse unless you take action. If you owe more than $10,000 in credit card debt, medical bills, or other unsecured debt, please take a minute and call the number on the screen. Learn about programs that have helped thousands of people get out of debt. Reduce your monthly payments, cut interest, and even settle your debt for a lot less than you owe. Save thousands. Get your life back. Call the number on the screen now. It's a free call, free information, and most importantly, you will have options. Remember, waiting will not make the problem go away. Call us. Our lines are now open.